now time for Bradford and Brooks, a civil discourse about civil affairs in Bardstown, Kentucky, and around the world. Please welcome your host for Bradford and Brooks, Margie Bradford and Jim Brooks. Now, get ready to enjoy a community forum to encourage citizen participation in the political process by the thoughtful discussion of political and civil issues. Was, was mayor. Well, that's true. I thought you were speaking about my age. No. <laughs> no, we're a little too close for me right. to comment on that, Dick. Right. No, that, that's correct. Uh, no one had succeeded run two terms or, or, or uh, had served two terms since Gus uh, retired in 1990, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, and, you know, and it's interesting to think back about how much the city has changed since Gus, uh, Gus was mayor. I mean, the, uh, uh, and I, I don't know, I mean, of course, you know, I'm at City Hall from time to time, and it's amazing, and I, very few people get to really understand that the city is several businesses, several operations wrapped into one, and that there's a lot of balls in the air at any given time from utility projects, uh, including electric, water, sewer, you've got cable TV, you've got uh, uh, internet, um, and then just plain customer service for, for dealing with billing and, and all sorts of issues. So there's, there's, and there's a lot of good work goes on. Uh, you've got some really good people, um, I think, in City Hall. And, uh, um, you know, my, my, my hat's off to all of them because without good employees, you know, it would make your job and other people's job that work there much harder. Right. We're, we're much, uh, <coughs> uh, quite a bit different than most cities of 14,000 <laughs> residents in that we had those five regulated utilities on top of garbage mm -hmm. uh, and your traditional services that you provide, which is public safety and recreation, streets and so forth, but electric, cable, internet, water, uh, and sewer, uh, a lot of cities don't deal with that. Some have water and mm -hmm. some have sewer, but so that's what, really what separates us and um, we're a big business. So since Gus retired, uh, you know, growth is really one of the main things you can mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. is and, and the growth in the services and growth in the amount of people we employ to provide the services. You know, uh, public safety is now 24-7. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not often done as a voluntary, you know, we talk about the fire department. Right. The right. police department is probably twice as many officers mm -hmm. as were back in 1990. So, mm -hmm. yes, we a lot of growth <coughs> and uh, takes a lot of good employees to make it work. Well, and I think... Uh, uh, and it, you have continued, of course, when your first term as mayor, and then then even now you've continued to uh, the city has continued to uh, to really be progressive as far as uh, um, attracting new business and new uh, uh, you know new business to our community. And, and of course, that you know, in my book, that that goes back as far as uh, when Gus Wilson ran for office the first time. You know, uh, bringing natural gas to our community and what, how that changed the face. Oh, of, absolutely! Of that made yeah. a that was right. a, a pivotal point. And and in all points since, mm -hmm. you know, how the, the economy and our local jobs have grown. We've seen a lot of a lot of advancement. Yeah, I'm I'm supposed to be in New York next Friday. I will be in New York next Friday speaking to a group who wants me to talk about Bardstown. And, and one of the things that I will be talking about early on is that people like Gus and his mm -hmm. council at that time, 1966 is when they started mm -hmm. talking about it. I think they got it here about 1968 was natural mm -hmm. gas. And today that's one of the most desirable commodities that you can have in industrial development. Mm -hmm. And, of course, residents and, and clean clean power in terms of doing your heating and so forth and uh, it's a big going to be a major uh, component of our next industrial park mm -hmm. you really can't have an industrial park today unless you have natural gas so getting gas to wherever that's going to be is going to be paramount uh, to being able to have an, another industrial park as our two we have now are just about uh, sold out from a practical standpoint of usable lots mm -hmm. uh, major uh, Come in. So that you will be considering uh, uh, acquiring more land for right. that. We're current, BIDC, we're currently looking for uh, new locations, and uh, we have two or three that we're uh, taking a look at now. But 
and we're talking with LG&E, and gas is a major conversation there. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to be. Obviously, the closer we could get to the two current ones that are both served, the better. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, Dick, I know that um, um, you, uh, you this, the term you're finishing up now, you, you were uh, basically um, uh, appointed, I guess, the council selected you. To uh, to serve as mayor, and you uh, you kind of came into office with your with a full plate of uh, things to work on, and um, and um, what's it been two years now mm -hmm. or more? It uh, April eighteenth of twenty seventeen. Okay, that uh, uh, I've, in my from my perspective, there's been a tremendous turnaround in the uh, I don't know in public opinion and culture in City Hall, uh, and I think that you've done a good job. Leading them forward out of uh, out of the past. Well, that's good to hear, and I, 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 I've gotten a similar feedback, <clears throat> and I, I got a lot of encouragement, encouragement to uh, run in this election. I think because of that, and you know, I, I have to say that when I ran two years ago for city council, I really thought I would be running now for the mayor's position without uh, being uh, uh, without. Having been appointed, I never dreamed that I would be appointed uh, appointed to uh, fulfill a, a term. Right. So, but having that happen, uh, you know, I think they felt like I was the most experienced person uh, available, and uh, that I had the right uh, background and uh, I guess uh, experience that I could come in under a very uh, difficult situation and, and kind of right the ship, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with the cooperation I got from the employees at City Hall and the City Council. Nick, what do you, what do you hear from people? What do you consider the most uh, pressing issue or the major issue in, in this race? Well, I don't think it's a, a, a really a race between two people and different ideologies, I think it's a race based on who people think are, is best suited to continue running. This is a big, big operation, as yeah. I stated earlier. Most cities don't have, a, our size, don't have a $57 million budget, but $48 million of that is utilities, right. which are almost sort of revenue in, revenue out, because mm -hmm. they're so capital intensive. But you got to have a good, strong business background to understand that. I mean, I'm not an engineer by trade, and uh, but I understand uh, financial uh, statements and so forth. So it gives me, a, uh, I think, a better position to be able to make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are looking at, you know, the economy is going so good right now. It's putting a lot of demand on our services but you know the future uh, things are changing so fast in our world today uh, you've got to be making plans for the future and, and that's what we're spending a lot of our time at the city as well as economic development on strategic planning to be better prepared to serve you know the global economy that we're serving now and workforce development is a big part of that and that's something we're really concentrating on mm -hmm. uh, so that we have enough people here and we can attract people to stay here uh, for employment reasons. Well, we've seen both public school districts, so they're making uh, efforts uh, on workforce development, partnering with local industry to uh, to help, uh, you know, help uh, train our uh, locals to, uh, our local young people to uh, to fill some of these uh, uh, skilled jobs. That that is, that is a correct, and I've met with both our new superintendents, and I attended an event this morning that Nelson County did that's related to that, and I'll be at another event they're doing on Tuesday, which is showcasing businesses like mine that are co-oping students already. Mm -hmm. And I've got a couple of success stories that I'll be able to share where we've uh, taken co-op students in, into our auto repair side mm -hmm. of our business out of the Nelson County School System, and it, it's worked very well. And um, because, you know, you can't start too early now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so good that the high schools are starting that uh, as we right. speak. And they've been on that for a few years, but I think mm -hmm. they really are turning up the uh, speed on this, both at Nelson County and right. Bardstown. Well, right. particularly, I know Nelson County's always done it. Bardstown's always participated, but there have been obstacles, and I think now a lot of those obstacles have been uh, right. removed or smoothed 
and that they're able to, uh, you know, get more students out there to do yeah, that. Yeah, both superintendents have made this a major priority, yeah. and they both have hired some good staff people to work right, on this. Right, that's and I, essential. We're, we're having a, a, a good run with this. Uh, well, Dick, uh, looking in the future of the city of Bardstown, and I know that uh, uh, planning and looking ahead is something that's necessary, uh, you know, as an effort, in an effort to kind of, uh, gauge what resources are going to be needed in the future. What are what are the challenges ahead for the city of Bardstown? I know that I know that dealing with inf aging infrastructure is that's just that's just a part of having a hundred year old uh, you know uh, sewer system or water lines or whatever. I mean you, you that's all that's part of that's just part of life. You know you've got to uh, maintain what you have. Uh, but are there any particular challenges that? Uh, the uh, say city utilities or any of the other aspects of well, city government. I think Trans transportation is going to be one. Handling the traffic <coughs> issues, which we've just gotten, a, you know, the proposals from the state on four possible locations for a, a new bypass. Um, but you know, even uh, locally, you know, keeping up with our streets and mm -hmm. drainage and all that. Um, not so much at the city. Again, this workforce development is, is a major issue for all of us here in Barstown and Nelson mm -hmm. County, and it's all over the country. And um, I think both Nelson County government and city government is going to have to be partners in that uh, effort. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I don't think financially, um, I think one of the biggest concerns we probably have is what is going to happen with the pension. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lawsuit going on right now. Right. Part of the funding side of it is outside of that lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know, they, the phase-in is supposedly uh, not threatened right. by the lawsuit, but I really worry about that because uh, we were facing a $700,000 uh, annual increase, mm -hmm. and where it is right now, it's 175000 right. So Big I don't difference. know where that's going, but <coughs> yeah. that's in the back of my head is something that could become a, a big issue a, for a us. A big financial issue. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I guess, is that with the uh, the CERS or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that, uh, of course, every school district, every city, every county government yes. uh, ha has to be thinking about that, too. Oh, because yeah. Because if that, if, if that structure changes, it's going to be a huge liability for all these local governments. Right. And, and I think we could weather it uh, mm -hmm. because we do have other businesses. Right. But you take your smaller communities... Uh, in smaller incorporated cities, it could bankrupt many of them and some counties. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of counties struggling in our state right, right. now because the tax base is not there to right. to fund the services the people are expecting. Uh, Dick, uh, is there any chance that the city could uh, do, yeah, do recycling? That's an issue that I think is important. Uh, I know, I mean, now I i would save i would save my recyclables and take them out. Yeah, uh, we're having discussions. Weekly, but uh, I, it would be so much nicer if I could just put them out at the side yeah, of the. Yeah, they call it curbside recycling. Curbside uh, recycling. We've had some discussions about that, and that's uh, probably in uh, some long-range planning. I think the, the next thing you'll mm -hmm. see us do in that regard is uh, get totally away from the garbage tippers and have the trucks where they can tip the cans for you. Right. Uh, right. I've, we've already been studying a few cities already on that. I think that would be the next thing we do. Uh, and then curbside uh, would come. Uh, the judge and I uh, have had some discussions. We're, we've kind of tabled them until after the election, but we both know if that were to come, we need a bigger uh, location to process it. Mm -hmm. And we are, we're probably going to have some discussions, assuming that he and I both get reelected. I don't know if uh, the next judge, if he wasn't reelected, would have that discussion. I assume they might. But um, uh, I think it's something we do need to look at. I don't think it'll happen within the next two years, but uh, it, it's a good, good news, bad news things. It costs more money, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody's making money with selling recyclables right now, but it does have a lot of pros and you know it extends the lifetime of your mm -hmm. landfills and it's uh, a better right. thing from well, a green standpoint well I mean I uh, for example with w with my doing my recycling I, my garbage I put I have one small one kitchen garbage bag full of 
cards. That's my weeks. Yeah. If I didn't, I would have two or three because of the newspapers and magazines and right. and uh, plastic. Uh, so yeah, it would, be, you know, I mean, that's a big difference in what goes in the landfill. You're exactly right. And the cost of uh, creating another acre of landfill are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it could happen. So uh, even if the recycling's not making any money, it, it could make money that way, so to speak. Well, you, it's either pay now or pay later. You, yeah. know, you might have to raise your rates to, in order to do it a little bit, but you would probably be facing higher rates if you're having to turn more property into landfill space mm -hmm. in a faster cycle. So there's a trade-off there. Right. Well, Dick, you have been, uh, well, since I've known known your family, it seems as though public service and, and volunteerism is, is was kind of a... Uh, it's a generational uh, thing you've and you have been very active as a volunteer board member on on a wide range of uh, boards including the Stephen Foster Drama Association um, but I will bet that you probably never believe that uh, you and the judge executive would be driving to Frankfurt to uh, try to save um, you know, after the amphitheater was shut down, that you probably that you go on a mission to try to save the Stephen Foster story from, uh, well, if not extinction, at least the loss of a season. Yeah, we that was such a surprise. I still, the judge and I both know the date, December twenty first last year. We went there thinking we were going to have a discussion about the problems, mm -hmm. and we left there. We had Senator Higdon, sent Representative McCoy with us, and we said, "Give us two weeks." to help us go back and let us see if we can put together a plan to stabilize the mm -hmm. theater so we can open for the 60th season and then put then we'll have some more discussion on trying to raise the money and that's we met with five or six people from the tourism and arts cabinet mm -hmm. and before the judge and I got back to town we both had received a email letter that we know now was probably written before that meeting that happened about 11 a.m. in mm -hmm. Frankfurt but uh, Hats off to the judge and fiscal court for taking over the lease, and mm -hmm. then he and I have worked together on raising the money, along with Salt River, has been a big partner in this. And, and then, like happens all the time, the community has stepped up, mm -hmm. and we, we've raised uh, commitments of about $900,000 towards the $1 million goal, and it's construction's underway as we speak. I was mm -hmm. there this morning for a meeting, and things are looking very positive, <coughs> and I uh, want to thank the public out there who has uh, stepped up and I uh, think you don't know what you don't have until you lose it and mm -hmm. that's another thing that makes Barstown different and special and the quality of life and enhances our quality mm -hmm. of life to have an active outdoor theater that is used more than just for Stephen sure. Foster. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that but it would be a major loss to not have a facility <coughs> like that. Yeah. And, and you don't really realize how many people from out of state uh, and sometimes from other countries uh, come uh, come to Barstown because in you know in doing a little bit of traveling, almost invariably meet some. I say, oh yeah, I've been to Barstown. I went to see that drama. Well, mm -hmm. my father and I have served to collectively 40 years uh, of the, about the first uh, 50 years of that organization. So it's it is part of my DNA, and uh, that's why I'm running again, I think, because I was raised to give back to this community. Uh, my parents, my grandparents, my uncles and aunts all said that no city or county like Barstown, Nelson County, can get it done depending on hired help. Mm -hmm. It takes other people of the community to make a commitment to the community and step up, and uh, you can't depend on government to do all, all of this. It takes, and that's what... Uh, we were taught, and I'm third generation of my family to serve as a mayor. Uh, there's four generations of my family have been here now, and the next generation are getting involved in the community as well. And uh, and it's just not us. There's a lot of people, oh, but yeah. that's what we're fortunate. So many people care mm -hmm. in Barstown about so many things, and uh, it's made a difference. And uh, that's why we're such a special place. And. I'm happy to be part of it, and I hope to continue to be part of it. If uh, people out there listening today think I'm the right candidate, I certainly would appreciate their vote and support uh, November 6th. All right. The, um, um, you, uh, your first term as mayor, uh, let's see, you, you left office, was it? 2010. Uh, 2010, mm -hmm. okay. All righty. Well, 
again, you will uh, you'll be a, a record holder in the uh, in the annals of uh, leadership in the city. Have, uh, if you win this election, having been elected twice, but two different times, not not consecutive terms. Yeah, that's another probably yeah. something different. Yeah, because uh, nobody, nobody since Gus Wilson has uh, served twice or two consecutive terms. That's correct. And, uh, you know, I, I would tell people I think part of the, the reason I feel like they should uh, have confidence in my ability to uh, lead the city is that both times that I've served right now have been under very difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. Coming in in 2007, the, the, right. the economy tanked. In 2008, we had 13% unemployment. Our tax revenue uh, really declined. We had, were under a lot of uh, constraints there, and we were and they, you know, we navigated through that and uh, balanced the budget without raising any taxes and uh, got through all that and and have benefited now for the uptick that came. Uh, after that, and uh, we're ready. I'm, I'm ready to continue serving and uh, leading uh, as we go forward and take advantage of the great opportunities we have going forward. Okay. Well, we. Uh, uh, it's been amazing to me over the last few years to see the continued, the growth in in Bourbon, and but it, and heartening to see the that Bardstown will still remain the Bourbon capital. <laughs> I think so. As we know, as we know we've got. Expansion is going on. Mm -hmm. We still got the Kentucky Owls going to be unveiling their plan here in a few weeks. And mm -hmm. uh, but one thing people don't realize is that we actually have more people employed in the automotive sector than we do in the bourbon sector here in Nelson mm -hmm. County. Uh, so it's great to be diversified uh, right. and not just a one-trick pony. Uh, so we have, I think, 1,600 employees in the automotive sector and 1,200 employees in the bourbon sector here in Nelson mm -hmm. County. Mm, and, I didn't uh, know that. And we have, of course, some packaging. Sure. You know, Fuji is a, a major packager, yeah. and then uh, Polyair mm -hmm. is another thing. I would refer to them more as packaging. And Orbis. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're not all got all our eggs in one basket, which is going to serve us well, I think. All righty. Well, Dick, I think we're just about down to the wire. Anything, uh, anything else you'd like to leave with our listeners about uh, uh, you seeking the uh, to to remain um, return as Bardstown's mayor? Well, I, I would. I think I've t kind of talked to that point some already, but I would just say that it has been an honor and a pleasure to serve the people of Bardstown now on two different occasions. Uh, it's been one of the most gratifying things I've ever done. I've served on a lot of committees, a lot of boards, everything from education to arts to hospitals, you name it. Mm -hmm. But it has been very gratifying, and uh, I appreciate the support of all the people in the community who have encouraged me to uh, get back into this business. And uh, it is kind of a family business, I guess, if, as many of my relatives have been involved over mm -hmm. the years. But uh, it's because we care, and uh, I do uh, appreciate it, and I would certainly appreciate your vote and support on November 6th. Also, my personal thanks to your wife, Alice. Uh, because you know it ha it takes her support to support you when you're when you're doing this because you've got several irons in the fire anyway. Well, and so. she's a, she's a very strong person. She understands the community. You know, mm -hmm. her family's been involved in the community. She worked oh, in yeah. state government yeah. for many years, so she is a tremendous sounding board and a great asset to me because I bounce a lot of stuff off her and. She rarely ever has steered me in the wrong direction, so it's good to have a partner like Alice, right. and I appreciate that. She will be joining me in New York next week, as she spoke to the same group in the past. Oh, neat. All right, uh, well, we're, uh, Dick, we're going to uh, take a break for some commercial messages. Thank you again for Thank coming you, in Thank you, Jim. Today. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon. All right, well, uh, stay, stay tuned. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to switch candidates during the break. Uh, stay tuned for these commercial messages. You're listening to a very special edition of Brand for the Day. 